Good to see everyone. Before we dive into Bison football, I'm going to comment on someone that's connected to Bison football, but just not here currently, and that's Bob Highland, head football coach at St. Mary's Springs. Uh, those of you who know Bob or, or know the name, uh, Bob graduated from here in 1970, became the head football coach at St. Mary's Springs in 1971, and on Friday he won his 500th football game as a high school football coach. And I think that deserves some acknowledgement, just not only in the number of games he's won, 14 state championships, 30 odd some conference championships, but the thousands upon thousands of young men and women he's probably positively influenced over his career. And so Coach Highland, if you're listening to this, congratulations. Um, we sent him a, a video, um, congratulations, and his grandson, Isaac, who plays for us currently right now, third generation, uh, got to be a part of it as well. And so I just think anytime we can acknowledge success like that, we need to. But uh, um, congrats to him, congrats to his family, because as you guys know, it takes a village to, to, to operate a team at times. But uh, good to see it. Like I said, good to see everyone. Um, tough win on the road uh, in Terre Haute. Uh, game was full of ups and downs and unique situations. Um, I am appreciative and excited that our players were able to f find ways and, and manners in which to get that scoreboard corrected. Uh, there's a lot of things that we need to continue to improve on. Uh, sounding a little bit probably like a, a broken record player when I come in here on Mondays, but the, the facts are the facts. Uh, I don't think we've played our best football. Uh, I had met with our leadership council this morning and told them the same thing. Um, I, don't, I, 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 I hate using the word potential. I just don't think we've played as well as that we're capable of right now. Um, you know, when, when you start looking at the, the number of, of, of so-called veterans and or uh, experienced players on this roster, I think there's more in the tank right now. And we got to find ways. I need to find ways uh, to get that uh, conveyed to the football field uh, in a minute. Because there's been glimpses of really good football during the course of the season. And then there's been moments of, of poor football. Uh, just calling it is what it is. But I'll open it up for questions. Yeah, so he was testing you guys deep a lot throughout the course of the game, you know, a lot of chunk plays, kind of more downfield. Is that something you're concerned with seeing more going forward? Uh well, you know, I, they, 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 they did put it up, you know, probably against some single high defense a, a time or two. Uh, you know, if they're completing it, it becomes a big issue. Um, you know, if, if, if they fall incomplete and they're 50-50 balls that you have the opportunity to go get, um, you know, I think they probably completed one or two. I know one – Kid made a great play. Dustin tipped the football, and it, you know, took a, you know, it's an, it's an oblong-shaped ball. It took the wrong bounce off his hand and fell right into the kid's hand as, or kid's body as he was laying on the ground. Uh, but that's something that we we have to make sure that we're we're prepared for. A lot of times we were able to take that away by defending people in a too high shell, um, but we jumped into some single high at different times and some of their RPO stuff. They they took shots with some max protection. Teams in the country going head to head this weekend. Kind of what have you seen from uh, South Dakota State as far as a program going to the point where they are right now? I think they're a really good football team. Uh, like I said before, I, I had a meeting with our leadership council this morning, uh, and I, I think they're eh, probably the best football team in the country. Uh, you look at their resume, they've played better football than we have, and so we got a lot of work to do. Uh, we have a lot of things that we need to continue to stress this week. Um, and, and, but I think our kids will be, will be locked in, and we, we have to have greater focus going into this game than we've had the last couple. Coming off of giving up 26 points, the most y'all have all year to an FCS opponent, what will be the message to the defense going into this one? We, we can't have bust on, on fits. Uh, simple things that, that, man, you go back, there's video evidence of us, you know, fitting counter hundreds, probably thousands of times in our time here, and it comes down to execution. And part of execution is being focused on the things that you've worked on all week. Well, when the focus isn't there and you kind of just go through the motions, you're, you're going to get exposed. And that, that's what's frustrating because, you know, you, you talk about we, we probably tackled okay, in my opinion, but you, you take the big explosive play away, probably we, we, we're talking completely different. But we have to, we have to fix those. There's always a lull in, in games, and, and we got to find a way to, to correct that. State turnovers come in bunches. You've had six fumbles lost in two of the last three games. Just what is it beyond better ball security? What, how do you stress that in practice? Well, I'm not sure if there's a way that we can stress it anymore in practice with 
ball security circuits, ball se- I mean, we have our scouts out there trying to strip the football. Uh, I, I don't know now. I don't know if there's a, there's a correct answer. Is it – if you look back at the six – fumbles we've had all of them have been poked out from the behind as kids are falling to the ground is it something that our kids are just straining to try to gain another yard and so now ball security is becoming compromised because now they're losing a couple points of pressure with the football that that's that would be one philosophy that I would have um our kids trying to strain for the extra yard and all of a sudden now the thing's on the ground but you're exactly right sometimes I think those things uh, happen more between the ears than they do you know because of the opponent the chance this week, or was that a short-term, long-term thing? Don't don't know right now. Uh, still waiting. He has a, uh, an appointment this afternoon uh, after this meeting, so uh, hopefully I'll get some good news. But I don't think it's a long-term uh, to answer part of your question. Anticipate he will be. Uh, thought potentially he could have maybe gone on Saturday uh, with that ankle sprain, but felt like it was necessary to give him another day or two uh, just to make sure. Last thing you want is that to become a chronic is- situation over the course of the remaining games. Number one versus number two in the Fargo Dome since it opened. Uh, any comment on that? When you get in the top two teams? Ha- have, not, have not even thought about it. It didn't come across my, my thought. Uh, I don't think we really look at those things too much. I'm sure knowing John, I doubt he and his team really look at that a whole lot. We know it's two teams that uh, – uh, have a great rivalry uh, between them, and both teams are going to play unbelievably hard on Saturday, and I anticipate it's going to be a, an op- awesome atmosphere in the Fargo Dome. And the crowd and the atmosphere have a game like this? Well, you, you know, one, quarterback hasn't played in, in, in the Dome uh, when it's full. Uh, of course, you know, false starts, anything like that, miscommunication. I do think at times it can be tough to uh, – do a lot of trade shift in motion, especially like jet motions and timing timing those things up uh, unless you're well-versed with noise. So it, it, it can impact, I think, the offense probably more so than the defense. Go back and look, maybe not even last fall, but the spring game where Gronowski played, I, Isaiah Davis played because Oladokun and Strong aren't there. Are you, I know you got six games worth of tape this year, but do you look at spring of 2021? Well, I think too? you look at some things. Now They have a new offensive coordinator as well, so you, you got to be smart not to – you know, chase things down rabbit holes, but uh, both teams have played each other a number of times over the course of, in my nine years here, it's probably been 12 or 13 games that we've played each other. Um, you, you can, like I said, you can get caught going down a rabbit's hole and, and not be productive. And so trying to look at the right things, uh, you know, how they took advantage, you know, there was some quarterback run game in that spring game. Uh, more quarterback run game has shown up of late. Uh, especially this last weekend against USD, you saw some more. So it tells me he's getting healthy, feeling better, uh, and, and we're going to have to do some things to layer our fits at different times. Ask that. Do you think is he back to Gronowski, but what you saw that spring? You know, I, I probably haven't seen him enough to, to say yes or no. We haven't had any crossover film with them, uh, meaning we haven't played an opponent who's played them. So today was really, and yesterday, were the first time that we really dove into watching their film. He, he looks like he's throwing it and spinning it and has great command of what they're doing offensively. Using Don Jones these days. Looks like he, he's all over the place. He is all over the place. He's, he's kind of become he, – he's too good to stand on the sideline, and so we're trying to utilize him as a little bit of a slot area defender in some nickel situations. He's still playing some safety at different times. And, um, you know, at time, trying to keep it simple for Dom – uh, but at the same time, he's been in the program three different three years now, and uh, this is the year where it needs to start clicking. But uh, I, I think he's doing a good job. Uh, you know, he's, he's a true safety, uh, and uh, uh, but he does a nice job in that slot area spot for us. As high a level as you have seen Cam Miller operate at, are you talking about Saturday yeah. or just recent? I I, I, Saturday. I, I Saturday I thought he was unbelievably efficient and. If you go back and watch the film, and I'm sure I know Ross, you have, there's probably three or four drops in there where all of a sudden this young man, you know, he was targeting it really well. Now, Cam's very detail oriented and very specific. I'm sure he'd sit here and tell you I, the ball was behind the receiver, but there was two or three balls that could have been dropped. I mean, you could be talking about 24 for 27, 25 for 27. Uh, that's two weeks in a row now that our quarterback's been 70%. Uh, two weeks in a row that we've thrown to eight different people. Um, and so uh, he's utilizing his tools. He's spreading the ball out all over the field. 
Um, I'm excited about where we're at. There's screen game, there's overs, there's verticals, um, there's, inter there, there's check down passes. He's making good decisions right now. Take a Youngstown game and throw that out. Your previous three opponents have had two total penalties. You'd have, you'd have to ask their coaches, I guess. I, I'm worried about us. It is. I, I don't know what to say. You know, it's. I don't know if it's just one of those things, uh, coincidence. But you know, we're going to keep doing what we do. You got a couple dozen snaps, I think, on Saturday. You have a chance to look at film and see yeah. how he performed, and what did you think of him? I thought he did a really good job. Uh, I think it was like 19 or 20 snaps total, uh, three tackles. I know he did a great job. They ran a full zone play, threw off the tight end, made a tackle in C-gap. Uh, I, I think we're only scratching the surface with Cole being a second-year player. He, he's going to have to mature quickly uh, as far as volume of playbook and playing efficiency, you know, execution level. Uh, we're, we got a lot of good football teams on our schedule still and uh, a, an excellent, outstanding football team on our schedule this week. It was at the end of the week, but you've got to be excited about the ribbon cutting of what's going to happen in the indoor facility. The, just the emotions of that, it looks like the, the, the road is done here with getting inside. Well, it, it is. Uh, there are hundreds of, upon hundreds of people that are connected to that, to the to the construction, the fundraising, the planning of, the, of that facility. Um, I remember in 2014, it, it was, you know, exciting to get the bubble. And this facility, you know, the bubble served its purpose and was unbelievable for eight, nine years. And believe me, we, we used the heck out of it. I think every sport did. Um, but uh, th this is going to be on a whole different level uh, when you compare it to the bubble. Um, there, there's been some unbelievable generous people that, um, are, are very well connected not only to football but to athletics that have allowed us to have the finances to build this. And a lot of people right here in the city of Fargo, Moorhead area, people in the state of, of, of North Dakota, but uh, alumni all over the country, supporters from all over the country that have really bought into the vision, bought into this is something that this university needs. And um, as you can see, it, I think this thing has been done with – as much class and, I mean, we talk about all the time at NDSU, one of the unique things that about our university is we do things the right way. I think here's just another example of we're going to try to do it better than it's ever been done and we're going to make sure it's done the right way and something that all of our alumni, current students, athletes, people in, in Fargo-Moorhead can be excited about. Team looked inside as the team got well, it. Every day you see people looking through the windows, um, you know, Usually, usually on Wednesday, I usually take a stroll through it when everyone's gone, um, so that way I don't get in trouble and no one comes at me for not having a hard hat on. Practicing next week if the weather turns yep. inclement. Yep. Okay. Anticipate. You know, one of the, the the great advantages we'll have is Mother Nature. All of a sudden, as you, we all know, the the wind shows up in Fargo out of nowhere. Um, but if we want to do seven on seven, we can step inside. It, it expands the room. We, we kind of have that area outside the dome now. That, that, that's 70 by almost 15 yards. That adds a, a ton of extra space. And so really it, it's almost like two and a half fields with, with all the space that surrounds those both, both football fields. Um, it, it, I'm, it'll be exciting to get in there. I anticipate we'll start using it here as soon as we can. I said last year his practice facility was more important than the new stadium they got. Would you echo that, that the practice facility is the most important piece? I think because it's a 365-day piece of equipment, and, and I'm not belittling it by calling it a piece of equipment, but that's where a lot of development goes on in the offseason. That's where, you know, when you live in the, the upper Midwest, uh, spring practice, you try to push it back as, as, as far as you can. We all know – Mother Nature is good for an April snowstorm up here in, in Fargo. You have to have a place where you can go. Uh, I can remember you know, two years ago in the spring where we kept our fingers crossed that the bubble wasn't going to come down with a wet, heavy snow. Now we have a facility that's going to be there when we need it, and all of our sports will, will, will have access to it. And uh, I, I think it'll, it'll add not only to the recruiting but also to – current roster and the preparation and the and the development that they have a, a new weight room another training uh, facility um, you know just is, is vital we have 400 and some student athletes uh, to be able to spread us out over multiple facilities I think we'll, we'll, we'll all see the benefit of it 
Any Power Five indoor facilities? Uh, I've, I've quite a few. Um, well, without it being totally completed yet, I think that'll probably be spring of 23 when you see more of the west side uh, completed, talking about locker room, training room, some meeting rooms, equipment room, weight room, all that being done. Uh, I would anticipate it's going to have a, a it, the upstairs recruiting lounge that look overlooks the, the field, probably very similar field to the University of Iowa's. I've uh, been down there a couple of times. Iowa State, very similar um, setup. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going it, 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 to be in the same conversation as a lot of those facilities. A lot the last few weeks about your frustrations with, with this team this year. Um, what, what, what do you, you what, what do you, uh, Yes, actually you have, and, and we've asked you about it. So that's, um, what, what, what do you like about this team? What, I mean, what, at this point of the season, six games in, when you look at, at your football team, what do you, when you look at it, you say, what, I really like this about our football team. Five and one. You have to like that. We're finding ways to win. Now, where I get frustrated, and again, I don't, I don't mean to come across as frustrated. I just think there's more. And maybe that's me being a stick in the mud. I am 50 now, so I guess I am considered old. Um, but maybe I just, I, I, think, I think they're better than what I've seen on, on Saturday. So if me having elevated frustration comes across as being, being frustrated, then I'm fine with that. They, 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 they know my expectations. I talk to every single one. I love every single one of our kids. You can tell by the crack in my voice. To fight as a coach, being too frustrated when you're talking to your team. I mean, it's, it's easy for me to be Always. Mr. Negative, but it, I, mean, I start every meeting with the positives, because in, the, in this world, it's it's what are the first things we talk about? You know, and I'm not picking on you guys, but what do we want? We talk about missed tackles. We talk about penalties. We talk about turnovers. We don't talk about the first three drives of the game were three and outs. We gave the offense the ball inside the 50 twice. We didn't talk about 70% completion for the last two weeks. You know, we didn't talk about a huge play. Sudden change, Will Mostart blocks a field goal. That's a big time play right there. That was a big time step up by the defense. There are positive things. We just haven't played consistent. There's moments where I think we've played really well. And there's moments where we have not played very well or I think we're better than what I'm seeing on the field. And I, what I'm telling you guys, I've told our football team. Is that offensively and defensively? Or? There is nobody is, nobody can hide from the details. And those are the things we point out all the time. Sanders on the D-line yep. for, for South Coast State. What do they do so well and how excited are you going to be when they're gone? <laughs> well, you know, they played a lot of football. So they've seen a lot of football. They've seen a ton of different schemes. Uh, you know, I think being a great D lineman, they play with a great pad level. They play with great hands. Uh, they cover up blocks. They're able to pop. They, they, they do all the little things that veterans should. Um, extremely active, uh, active with their feet, active with their hands. Got great eye discipline. And I know sometimes that people are like, well, you're a D lineman, man. You, you still got to see what you're you're playing. And I think those. And, and they're well coached. And, and, and you can tell they're they bought into the system uh, of their four down. You know, too high cover four. Uh, is, is, is what they're going to base out of, and those guys are good at it. They've played a lot of ball, and, and uh, it, it's going to be a battle up front. Challenge is Isaiah Davis going to be for your defense? Got to tackle. Big physical back, wants to get downhill on you. Man, if he squares you up in a hole, uh, it's going to be a collision. And we, we, we need to do a good job of getting more hats to the football. Uh, getting off blocks will be critical. That's one of the things that sometimes, you know, you, you, you want to talk about losing the cup or, or missing tackles. Part of it is just being able to shed, engage, separate, and throw off and go make tackles. Uh, we can't stay blocked. Uh, we, we have to get people to the ball. Uh, is Peyton Tucker Craft playing in this game for South Dakota State? Uh, I would. You know, I mean, it's, it's a big one. You know, I mean, it, it, it's two teams that I think have great respect for one another, but love to beat each other. And so, putting it bluntly, um, so I, it would not shock me at all. I, I, didn't, I think we're anticipating he's going to play. Challenge is that? Present just what kind of physical load is he? Well, he's he's extreme. He's a dynamic player. Uh, you've seen it in their screen game. You see it in their run game. Does a great job setting the point. Uh, you know, it gives them three versatile tight ends now. Uh, you know, they, they've been playing with with two so far, and and, and to add another one, uh, it just again gives you more complexity with their personnel. Not necessarily to like rank him against a Rosa Boom or, or Backus, but what does Bach do so well for them? 
I think he understands what they're doing. I think he, he does a great job of stacking fall back and they're too high, buying time. They're going to play those safeties down eight, nine yards. He buys those times to get in the fit. Uh, great tackler, very physical uh, at the point of attack. Their program changed the Jackrabbits in the nine years that you've been here. Well, I think they've changed philosophically from what they do. Uh, I, I can, I, I'm probably going back to 2016, I think is when probably the, the change offensively uh, started getting in the gun a little bit more, some more quarterback run. Uh, I think prior to that, it was a lot of under center. Uh, wasn't a ton of plus one run game. They've become more athletic on the perimeter. Uh, they've done a great job of recruiting. Uh, and you know that, that's the name of the game, getting the right kids in the right places and, and, and finding kids that are, that are going to buy into what your daily environment is. Yeah, asking, you mentioned turning 50. How'd you spend your birthday? <laughs> I celebrated it the same way I've celebrated the last 28 in an office somewhere, okay? Watching or either putting a previous week's game to bed and starting work preparation on the next opponent. So there, there was a cake brought in, um, extremely inappropriate, uh, <laughs> turning 50. I walked in, my office was, was draped in a lot of senior citizen uh, items, but uh, I'll let you I'll let your mind wander and, and uh, go where you want to with that. But uh, I did get a chance to eat dinner with the family, uh, the boys. Uh, Kellen, Connor, and Brenda came up and had dinner with me. Uh, saw the, sta the staff. Uh, it was always fun. Coach Rolls, Coach Polly. I got a I got a video from Coach Gazer's sons wishing me a happy birthday. Um, Tyler Rolls' kids came in, all gave me a hug. And so it was a good day. So it was successful. All right. Appreciate it. You guys have a great one.